We'll be in Psalm 40 today, and uh, sometimes I have to make reference to the New Testament quotation to sort of prove that these Psalms are speaking about Christ, a, a good majority of them. And uh, in this particular one, the quotation is in Hebrews. And uh, it's a very clear quotation referring to the sacrifice, uh, resurrection, and high priesthood of Christ. And it says, sacrifice and burnt offering you have not desired. And then it says, then said I, behold, I come in the scroll of the book. It is written of me. I delight to do your will, O my God. And again, that's quoted as referring to Christ. So now we read the entire Psalm. Psalm 40, I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. And I believe that this is uh, the prayer of Christ to the Father to uh, give him life, to raise him from old covenant death. He brought me up out of the pit of destruction, out of the miry clay. And again, since we are in Christ, this can be said of us too. But it was first said of Christ as he was the first to rise from the dead. He set my feet upon a rock, making my footsteps firm. So because the Father did this for the Son, we in the Son have this as well. And he put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. That's probably the song of the Lamb that we sing. Many will see and fear and will trust in the Lord. How blessed is the man who has made the Lord his trust and has not turned to the proud, that is the self-righteous, nor to those who lapse into falsehood, the uh, deception of justification by works of the Pharisees and all those, of course, who would follow after. Many, O Lord my God, are the wonders which you have done and your thoughts toward us. There is none to compare with you. If I would declare and speak of them, they would be too numerous to count. Just a uh, astonishingly warm passage about God's compassion and love for us and that his thoughts of us cannot even be numbered. You know, we think about those we love. We miss them when they're gone. God thinks of us continually. And uh, he only thinks gentle, warm, merciful, kind, and uh, compassionate thoughts toward us. I had a friend ask me the other day, is the Lord angry with me? And I said, no, the Lord is not angry with you. And uh, this person has placed their trust entirely in the cross of Christ. And I said, um, the Lord took out that anger on the Son so that he would not be angry with you. Uh, the Lord is never angry with his children. That was but for a moment, and it was delivered in full force upon his son so that he would not be angry with us. His thoughts, if we were to count them, would be too numerous. Sacrifice and meal offering you have not desired, and the Psalms say that in several places. God doesn't desire those things. The Pharisees thought he did, God does not desire works, sacrifice. My ears you have opened, burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. And yet we see that they were required under the Old Testament. But this is referring, the whole context here is for salvation. Then said I, behold, I come in the scroll of the book. It is written of me. I delight to do your will, O my God. Your law is written in my heart. So here's this very interesting statement of Christ. Now, of course, we know that God did not desire sacrifice and burnt offering for us, but it's interesting how he brings himself up and a body you have prepared. So the one sacrifice he did desire and that was the sacrifice of Christ. But he doesn't desire sacrifice and burnt offering of his people because Christ is the only one who could step in and perform one sacrifice for all. I have proclaimed glad tidings of righteousness in the great congregation. That is, God's righteousness has been given to us. Behold, I will not restrain my lips, O Lord, you know I have not hidden your righteousness within my heart. That is, Christ has not hidden it within his heart. He has brought God's righteousness to us, and therefore, of course, we do not hide it. 
And he says, I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. And let me put the emphasis on the pronoun. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your loving kindness and your truth from the great congregation. So Christ did not do that, nor do we. You, O Lord, will not withhold compassion from me. Remember that when things seem to be going awry. Your loving kindness and your truth will continually preserve me. We are eternally secure because of our performance. No, it says your loving kindness and your truth will preserve me. His promises, his truth, his word, his love, his compassion. For evils beyond number have surrounded me. My iniquities have overtaken me so that I am not able to see. They are more numerous than the hairs of my head and my heart has failed me. And this is, of course, Christ bearing the sin of his people. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me, that is to bring me out of death. Make haste, O Lord, to help me. Let those be ashamed and humiliated together who seek my life to destroy it. Those were those who crucified Christ. Let those be turned back and dishonored who delight in my hurt. And they were dishonored by their own words. Let those be appalled because of their shame who say to me, aha, aha, let all those who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say continually, the Lord be magnified. That should always be on our lips. Salvation is of the Lord and therefore the Lord is magnified. Again, that's not religious. That's just the facts. Salvation, forgiveness, eternal life, it all comes from the finished work of Christ. And therefore we can say, the Lord mag be magnified instead of my will or my works or my effort. Since I am afflicted and needy, let the Lord be mindful of me. You are my help and my deliverer. Do not delay, oh my God. And he did not delay. Three days and three nights was he in the heart of the earth and he was bearing sin. And then his sacrifice was accepted. Psalm 40, beautiful psalm. 